Welcome back, 942 this morning. We've got our latest round of Pet Patrol, also this adorable puppy. And as we welcome warmer weather with summer fast approaching, there's also the unwelcome return of flea and tick season. So of course, we wanna keep our four-legged friends safe from those tick-borne illnesses. So here with some helpful tips, Dr. Eric Cryan, thanks so much for joining us here again. And tell us first a little bit about our little friend here. Look how adorable she uh, is. This is Nala. We adopted her from uh, to the rescue, uh, you know, about two and a half weeks ago for my daughter Kiara's uh, 14th <laughs> birthday. So we had her about two weeks. She's a great Pyrenees uh, lab rescue mix from Southwest Virginia. So she'll probably be a big girl, but yeah. she's getting used to the wife and kids and the uh, dog and cats well. You know, she's a good addition. <laughs> You've got a whole house full of yes. animals, of people, all sorts of fun going on in the Cryon household. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, summer months, what happens with uh, tick-borne illnesses. Talk to us a little bit about what this can actually do to our dogs, mosquitoes, ticks, all of that. Yeah, uh, they're, they're certainly a concern. We recommend them be, uh, dogs be on preventatives all year round. When I okay. adopted poor Nala, she had four or five ticks with her. Wow. And so we worry about if they're attached for 24 to 40 hours, they can transmit a lot of disease like Lyme disease or lichiosis, anaplasmosis, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. So we want to try to prevent them from being attached and staying on from you know 24 to 48 hours mm -hmm. when a lot of these organisms can get transmitted. So you want them to be on a good flea and tick preventative, be it a topical or an oral one or a collar. There's uh, many great options nowadays that when I started uh, practicing medicine back in the uh, Stone Age, <laughs> the last millennium. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember, you know, when I ever since I was young, you, I would get the kind that would you put along their backs. But mm -hmm. there's now simple, easy ones that are like pills, right? Right. There's now kind of all-in-one ones, which I, I put her on, where you can give once a month, and it does heartworms, flea, tick, uh, you know, pretty much protects them from most, mm -hmm. most uh, medications, and it's an oral treat. And so it also does off-label, like, uh, you know, some mange and things like that with all the foxes we see running around in Northern Virginia. Right. Apparently, Bear in Arlington as well. Last yeah, week, so, exactly. You know, I know. <laughs> I saw a fox, actually, uh, in my neighborhood just uh, the other night. So, you know, let's talk a little bit. You said you like to keep them on year-round, but mm -hmm. some people, you know, maybe don't necessarily have the financial means to do mm -hmm. that. Is that okay for them to do it more so during the summer months, or do you advise against that? Well, certainly, you know, if I knew at the first of the month and if we're on a monthly preventative that it wasn't going to go above, say, you know, uh, 45 degrees, 40 degrees, then you'd probably be all right. But the weather we have now, it always goes right. up and down. So I do see parasites all year round. Obviously, a lot, lot more in the uptick in the last month or change when things get warm up in April, May, June, it's through the summer. So, you know, that's when we see a peak of parasites, be it uh, mosquitoes and then the diseases they can transmit, like heartworm, uh, you know, fleas. They can transmit uh, tapeworms and ticks and the tick diseases that I mentioned previously. Okay. What are some of the symptoms to look out for when it comes to any of these tick-borne illnesses, mosquitoes, things like that? Excellent question. Um, most of the tick-borne illness illnesses can cause lethargy, sometimes lameness, okay. fever. Sometimes they can have, you know, uh, shifting lame lameness and Lyme disease. They can get, a, you know, sometimes an infected spot where they were bit. Uh, sometimes they can have problems, you know, uh, you know, eating and they eat less and change in behavior or running a fever. So anything out of the normal, especially if you see a tick attached, you know, certainly, you know, consult your veterinarian. Okay, absolutely. And uh, what age can you start giving them this? Because I know little Nala here is only 10 weeks old. Can she, if you've got a new puppy, maybe get one for like your daughter's birthday? Right, right. She had a good birthday present that they've been on me for quite some time to get. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, you can, most of the products you can start about eight weeks, but again, consult your veterinarian. So yeah, she's on her monthly stuff and got her dewormer to get her all ready for interacting with the family. I love that. Love that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming in and giving us some advice here. Uh, I know I need to go refill my prescription for my puppies <laughs> and, and get them ready to go for, uh, you know, all the tick-borne illnesses that are out there because we like to hike a lot too, which is a big, huge thing too. All the summer fun, you know, yeah. you want to do that to get out, but it does put you at more oh, risk. Absolutely. You definitely want to keep them checked throughout the area as well. All right. Well, we'll send it back over to you, Stephen. All right, Jacqueline, uh, listen, we always love it when Doc comes in with all the furry friends. Yes.